Hello and welcome to The Eye, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. The U.S. state of New Mexico has passed a decree proclaiming July 19, 2021 as Dr. Jonathan Iralu Day all throughout New Mexico in honor of a Naga physician's work during the pandemic. At least 22 people were killed in 11 different incidents as rains wreaked havoc on Mumbai and Mumbai metropolitan region since midnight. Fully vaccinated UK Health Minister Sajid Javed on Saturday said he has tested positive for COVID-19. Now for the news in details. The U.S. state of New Mexico has passed a decree proclaiming July 19 as Dr. Jonathan Iralu Day all throughout New Mexico in honor of a Naga physician's work during the pandemic. According to the decree, citing the proclamation signed by Governor Michelle Lugin Grisham and Secretary of State Maggie Toulouse Oliver, Dr. Iralu, who is the Indian Health Service Chief Clinical Consultant for Infectious Diseases, is one of the individuals who contributed to the success in New Mexico against the virus. He has been treating New Mexicans and caring for his community at the Gallup Indian Medical Center since 1994, it stated. The decree stated that Dr. Iralu is also an instructor at Harvard Medical School and serves as a senior physician at Brigham and Women's Hospital Division of Global Health Equity in Boston, Massachusetts. He has been proactive since the outset of the pandemic in taking measures to protect the people of New Mexico, establishing a drive through COVID testing operation weeks before the first confirmed COVID-19 case in New Mexico and throughout the pandemic. He delivered timely, high-quality COVID-19 patient care to members of New Mexico's tribes, nations, pueblos, the proclamation stated. He has been an invaluable advocate for his community and has provided a great service in the medical advisory team and the state the decree stated. The governor has declared that the U.S. state will recognize July 19, 2021 as Dr. Jonathan Iralu Day all throughout New Mexico, the proclamation stated. The United Naga Tribes Association on Border Areas has listed out a number of suggestions to the Nagaland government in tackling the Assam Nagaland border as peaceful coexistence between the two states will not be possible without resolution based on historical facts. The Antaba issued a statement on Sunday, July 18, stating that a chief executive member and a team of the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council had offered enough plot of land at Daldali Reserved Forest adjacent to Indesan, Ayumkam and Rangapahar Army Cantonment area to the Assam government for the establishment of battalion headquarters and training centre for special forces and commandos of the armed Assam police. The Naga people may be compelled to resist fiercely of such a move so as to maintain peaceful coexistence among the people, the Antaba stated. The Antaba has proposed to the Nagaland government a chief minister level meeting immediately to conduct comprehensive review of the interim agreements of 1972 and 79 to adopt appropriate steps to denotify the disputed area belt and remove the debt tag from all the ancestral and historical Naga lands bordering Assam. Second, it proposed adopting appropriate steps to remove the CRPF and directly assume the civil and police administrations in all these areas. The Antaba also asked persuading the Assam government to withdraw the civil suit number no. 2 of 1988 from the Supreme Court so that the interstate boundary of two states can be settled on historical basis for all times to come. Until an interstate boundary solution is brought about on the basis of historical facts, there can never be permanent peace between the two states, the organization stated. The new political party, the Rising People's Party, has demanded that the Nagaland Chief Secretary cancel the notification threatening to withhold the salary of unvaccinated government employees or those not submitting negative COVID-19 test reports. 
The Rising People's Party issued a statement on July 18, condemning what is called the cowardly attitude of the government, stating to withhold salaries of government servants who have not been vaccinated or do not submit COVID-19 negative test report every 15 days. The RPP has strongly urged the Chief Secretary to cancel the notification immediately. This authoritarian nonsense has no place in a democracy like India, and it's clearly visible now that the state is suffering from leadership crisis, the RPP stated. The party reminded that there were ways and means to tackle issues. It stated that instead of ordering likes of government employees to take and pay for every true nut, RTPCR CB nut tests once in 15 days from their own pockets and a government, which does not treat its own employees with contempt, should provide the test for free. The RPP demanded that instead of harassing its own employees, the state government should set up a separate COVID testing facility specifically for its employees. The RPP reminded that even Meghalaya High Court in its order dated June 24, 2021 has held that forcefully or mandatory vaccination violates the fundamental rights of a person. With this notification, the Nagaland government is working on thin line, the RPP stated. By forcing likes of state employees to take tests every 15 days, suspicion is being raised that the state government is trying to mobilize funds through dubious methods, the party stated. It's nothing but extortion, and after having made a blunder with the cess on fuel, the state government is again playing with the livelihood of its own employees, the party added. The 10-day-long total shutdown in Manipur begins from today with strict enforcement by security personnel in every part of the state. Most streets in Manipur wore a deserted look with no commuter except few in essential services. All the shops and business has been shut down. Only few medical shops were seen open today. According to the order issued by concerned district magistrate, only a few limited activities would be allowed during the curfew period. That includes service for water and power, movement of LPG distribution and goods truck, police department, telecom and internet services, activities related to agriculture and horticulture, garbage clearance activities, petrol pumps to be open and essentials and key government departments to continue its functioning. While talking to Hornbill TV, Sunzu Bachas Patimayum says current board of curfew is much stricter and government is serious about tackling the surging Delta variants of COVID-19. He further said that the state needs more than just curfew. He further said common people, particularly in Greater Imphal area, will be much affected because it is the commercial hub and all kinds of activities has been freezed. He further said there must be some fault in tracing, testing and treatment as numbers of positive cases keep increasing in spite of the efforts put by the state government. According to Mr. Sunzu, the common perception in Manipur is one must not need to test until one is very sick and even for people who are tested positive, remain in COVID care centres for three to four days and if nothing happens, are not tested, which was faulty on their part. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma participated in four different events over Saturday and Sunday where seized contraband worth nearly 163 crore rupees was burnt to give out a message of zero tolerance against illegal drugs. Events at Deepu, Golakat, Barhampur and Hajoi in central Assam were part of the new Bharatiya Janata Party-led government's ongoing camping against illegal drug trade after it returned to power in May this year. Trade in illicit drugs is an epidemic and those involved in it should be dealt with stringently. It affects youths, destroys their families and gives rise to various other social ills, Sarma said at one of these events in Baharampur on Sunday. When we assumed office, we decided to provide support to those addicted by illegal drugs and also their families. Our first effort was to stop the supply of drugs to our state. Second was to end its circulation and third was to rehabilitate those affected by its abuse, he added. Sarma said that between May 10 and July 15, the state police registered 874 cases under narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. NDPS Act and arrested 1,493 drug dealers across the state and seized nearly rupees 163 crore of the contraband. On July 14, the CM informed the State Assembly that over 27 kg of heroin, 12,823 kg marijuana, 41 kg opium, 78,000 bottles of cough syrup, over 1.3 million psychotropic tablets, 3 kg morphine, 3 kg crystal methamphetamine, 3,200 kg poppy straw, and rupees 
1.80 crore in cash were since were seized since May 10. On Saturday, Sarma burnt 802 gram of heroin, 1,205 kg of cannabis, 3 kg opium, and over 200,000 psychotropic tablets at Golakad, followed by burning of 3.47 kg of heroin, 11.88 kg of morphine, 103 kg of cannabis, 2.8 9 kg of crystal methamphetamine and over 200,000 psychotropic tablets at Deepu. A team of Imphal East police under the supervision of SP Imphal East and SDPO Porombat said to be acting on a specific information conducted frisking and checking in Soi Bamlaikai area near Citizen Club and caught two persons with 20 soap cases of heroin powder. The two persons were identified by police as one Washing Akram, who is 21 years of age, and Lemba Yumkai Bam, who is 26 years of age. Washing Akram is said to be originally from Mayang Imphal, but right now resident at Hata in Imphal East District. While on the other hand, Lemba Yumkai Bam is from New Checking in Imphal East District. According to SP Imphal East District and Hirojit Singh, after interrogating Washim and Lamba, they revealed two other names involved in the racket. Washim and Lamba were caught by police around 5.30 p.m. on Saturday. However, police immediately started search operations for two other individuals. SP Imphal East further said that the police team was successful in nabbing two other individuals around 6.20 p.m. The two individuals who were caught later on were identified as Ningtho Kungjam Nilachandra Singh, who is 27 years old. Another individual was identified as Rizwan Khan of Lilong Kunu in Thubal district. SP Hirojit further said Nilachandra Singh made disclosure of two other persons involved in the racket identified by the name of Tongkho Jang Baite of Mojong village in Teng Nopal district and Hemkomang Baite of Mori Ward No. 1. The arrest of these two persons was said to be made around 7 pm. The seized heroin powder is said to be weighing around 276 grams in total, which is estimated to be around Rs 55 lakh and 20,000 in international value added as PMFAL East. Further, the above mentioned six persons, along with the seized items, are said to be handed over to the officer in charge, Purumpat Police Station, for taking up legal actions upon them. In a joint operation of the Assam Police and Assam Forest Department, one IRB personnel, namely Koto Rako and one Ilungi Kwame, both from Nagaland, were detained at Bokachan on July 18, around 1 p.m. A police official from Bokachan informed Hornbill TV that their vehicle bearing a Nagaland number plate was searched, where 12 geckos and 12 kilos of Chinese pangolin skin were confiscated. The official informed that the IRB personnel is headquartered at a boy in Mon district and was supposed to meet another person at Bokajan to hand over the geckos and the skin. In this connection, the Assam Forest Department is handling the case, it was informed. With the recent news of three sisters, Anshu, Ritu and Suman cracking the Rajasthan administrative services, together comes another good news from the state. Asha Kandara, who hails from Jodhpur, also cracked the RAS. But her story is like no one else's. Asha, a 40-year-old woman and a mother of two, has been working as a sanitation worker with the Jodhpur Municipal Corporation. Now that she has cleared the examination, she will be appointed as a senior official in the state administrative service. Asha and her two children were abandoned by her husband eight years ago. It was then that she took up the job of a sanitation worker at Jodhpur Municipal Corporation to sustain her family. She did not lose hope and with the help and support of her parents, she decided to continue her studies and completed her graduation. It was after her graduation that she appeared for the Rajasthan Administrative Services in 2018. Asha also said that her inspiration was her father because she was educated and knew the value of education. Education is the answer. Education opens the door to opportunity, she said. Asha's father, Rajendra Kandara, pursued his studies despite his underprivileged background. He has now retired as an accountant with the Food Corporation of India. At least 22 persons were killed in 11 different incidents as rains wreak havoc on Mumbai and Mumbai metropolitan regions since midnight, the BMC Disaster Control said here on Sunday. As Mumbai slapped the skies opened up with thunder, lightning and heavy rains measuring between 
197 mm to over 235 mm in some areas in barely 3 to 4 hours as per the IMD Mumbai which submerged many areas and hit road and rail traffic badly. According to the BMC Disaster Cell and NDRF, at least 17 persons were killed when a wall collapsed after a tree fell at Vashi Naga, New Bharat Nagal, in the Chambur area around 1 a.m. In another incident, at least three people perished when a few huntsmen caved in the Surya Nagar slums in Vikroli East. A 16-year-old boy, Soham M. Thorat, was killed when the wall of his home collapsed early on Sunday while a 26-year-old youth, Salim M. Patil, was electrocuted in his sweet meat shop in under U.S. Around another 12 persons injured in all these incidents have been rushed to various hospitals and are undergoing treatment with a condition described as stable. The BMC's gorgeous recorded rainfall of 177 mm in South Mumbai, 205 mm in eastern suburbs and 195 mm in western suburbs. In many areas, people reported waist-deep waters with a flood waters entering the ground floor, homes or shops in the vulnerable or low-lying areas. UK Health Secretary Sajid Javid on Saturday said he has tested positive for coronavirus and is currently self-isolating at home along with his family. In a video posted on Twitter, Javid said he took a lateral flow test which has come out positive and is currently waiting for the results of the RT-PCR test. He wrote that this morning he tested positive for COVID. He is waiting for the PCR result but he has had his jabs and symptoms are mild, Javid wrote. Javid was fully vaccinated against COVID-19 as he posted a picture of him getting a second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine on May 16. The newly appointed health secretary has backed Prime Minister Boris Johnson's plan to remove almost all restrictions on July 19 amid a raging third COVID wave. Two athletes have tested positive for the coronavirus in the Tokyo Olympic Village after a team colleague was also infected, officials said on Sunday, raising fears of a cluster just days before the opening ceremony. The first cases involving athletes in the village come a day after a member of the Intorich returned the first positive test in the complex, which will house thousands of athletes. The three infections were revealed as competitors fly in from around the world for the pandemic-delayed Olympics, which are facing significant opposition in Japan due to their COVID risk. Tokyo 2020 spokesman Masa Takaya said that the three cases were from the same country and sport. They are isolated in the rooms and Tokyo 2020 is delivering meals to them, he said, adding that the rest of the team have been tested. The team was not identified. The Olympic Village a complex of apartments and dining areas in Tokyo will house 6,700 athletes and officials at its peak when the delayed 2020 Games finally get underway. The Tokyo Games, which will be held largely behind closed doors to prevent infections, are unpopular in Japan, where opinion polls have consistently demonstrated a lack of support. That's all for tonight's English News Bulletin. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.